Imagine this, you are running a bank and every employee has a key to the vault. Not a great idea, right? Your Azure environment is no different without any access control. Azure RBAC ensures everyone has the right permission, nothing more. We'll cover Azure RBAC today in complete depth, which will clear all your concepts from scratch to master the Azure RBAC. I'm not a big believer of only theory in DevOps. So we'll jump into labs and we'll do hands-on and see how we can add any of the RBAC permission to a particular user or identity. You'll find uh, multiple videos that will tell you how to give RBAC to a user via the Azure portal or the CLI. We are not only doing the same here, but we are getting inside the framework of how Azure RBAC works. If you are a student who just started learning or a professional a DevOps who already know the basics but wants to master the Azure RBAC, then this video is for you. In my previous videos, I have already covered the authentication that is log into Azure in three ways and uh, another video which is log into Azure using the certificate that covers the authentication in Azure. But a strong security system need authentication and authorization and RBAC is nothing but the authorization in Azure. So let's cover today in depth authorization in Azure. Welcome everyone, I'm Alok Adhav and this is Casa Cloud, where we simplify DevOps and cloud technologies for you. With Azure RBAC, we define who can access the resource, what they can do with them and at what level. For example, engineer that might have permission to restart a virtual machine but not to delete a virtual machine. A data scientist could analyze data but cannot alter the infrastructure settings. It's all about the principle of least privilege. Let's get in the Azure RBAC. We, here we have five different things. First is permission, role definition, role assignment, security principle and scope. Permission is nothing but the action that is to be done on any of the resource. Role definition is the collection of the permission there can be multiple permissions added in a particular role. The permissions when we are adding in a role can be distinguished into multiple categories, kind of action, not action, data action, and not data action. We'll see this in depth in the upcoming slide. Then we have the role assignment. Role assignment is the entity which glues the security principle that means whom to give the RPAC may it be a user group or a identity which particular role we need to give the access that is the role definition and the third is scope that is on what level we need to give this particular access to the security principle may it be a management group subscription resource group or the particular resource. Let's see things in depth. It is the same thing that we have seen in the previous slide. We have a permission, we have a role definition, we have the role assignment and in role assignment we can see the security principle that is a user, a group and a identity and the scope here. Okay but before going to the role assignments let's first go through the permission section. Let me zoom this up, the permission section. So permission is of format company dot provider name dot resource type and then the particular action that can be done on uh, any of the resource. So the action can be a wildcard, it can be read, write, action and delete. Let's understand this further. Okay, so there are multiple categories in which the permissions are distributed. The categories from general, compute, networking, storage, web and mobile, container, database, till the hybrid and multi-cloud. So these are the major categories in which all the resources are first generalized and every resource will have its own permission list. Let's for the example go through the container category. So if I go here and click the container category, 
So here we can see roughly we have the resource provider Microsoft.container instance, Microsoft.container registry, Microsoft.container service and Microsoft.redhat OpenShift. Let's go back here. What we have seen is company dot provider name. If you see here company which is Microsoft provider name that is container instance, container registry, container service and Red Hat OpenShift. So these are the provider names. So what is the resource type and action that we can see if we go inside any of the provider. So if I'm going inside the provider, this is the provider container service. Okay. So here if we go, then we will see these are all the list of permissions. Okay. Of a particular category. This is Microsoft dot container service, which is provider. Then we have the register and then the action. What do we have? Resource type and the action. So what is the resource type? Register and what is the action? It is action. And if you see, this is a long list of the permissions that goes on. There are multiple, multiple permissions. Here you see manage cluster, which is EKS. Manage cluster, manage cluster. So if you see, this is a very, very big list that goes on. Okay. So this is how the permissions are categorized in, in these particular categories. And this is how we can see and list the number of permissions that a particular resource have. So as a DevOps engineer, if you have a ticket now to assign a user only access to a AKS resource, then how would you proceed? You will first directly go and start understanding about the container because container has the AKS category. So if you get into the container category, there you can see that AKS is the service for which a user has to have a Microsoft.container service permissions. In that which particular service, we are not talking about it right now because we need to understand roles after this because a roles will have the right set of permissions. But to see what are the total permissions, we need to go through this particular list. I hope you understand the permissions now. Okay. Let's understand how the permissions are further classified, the control plane action and the data plane action. So understand this. We have the Azure resources the Azure infra resources and then there is real data. So if I'm talking about VM Kubernetes, this is all control plane actions. But if I'm talking about the storage, the real storage, the the files which are stored in the storage blob. So that is data plane. So any permission that is related to the resource may it be a VM Kubernetes a storage account. It is all about the control plane permissions but if you are talking about any permission which is related to the data that means a person may be able to access the real user data through that permission so that is classified in data action plan so permissions will eventually be classified into these four categories when we'll be creating a role definition so what is the key difference between the data action and control plane action? The scope is manage resource settings and configuration. And in data plane, it is access or manage the actual data. Here we are only managing the resource. Here we are managing the data. Example, create and delete of VM, assigning roles and scaling up the app may it be starting the VMs. And in the data plane, it is read, write, blob, Query the database, accessing the files from the file storage. Roles include owner, contributor and reader. And here there are specific roles which include specific permissions. That is storage blob data reader, SQL DB contributor. Authentication is user RPAC, that is ARM scope. And here we have two different ways. One is user RPAC and second is example like SaaS token which is specifically to access the data. How do you classify which particular permission is a data permission and which is the um, control plane permission? 
that can be validated through the format how the permission is created if we just have the company provider and the resource and then directly the action that is a control plane permission and if we have the company then provider then the resource and then there are further classification in the slash so that means that it is a data action permission okay that is a major classification so how do we see this data control plane and the data plane permission for that we need to go to the portal let's go to portal.azure.com i'll just log in and if we go to any of the subscription that we have and i'm going to the access control that is iam and in iam you can see multiple roles here so these are the roles offered by azure we are yet to get into roles but to showcase the permission we need to showcase it through the roles only so my interest currently is in the storage account okay because i know i want to show you something related to access okay so here we have the storage account contributor what is storage account contributor these are the permission this particular role includes and these are the data actions this particular role include do we have any data action no if we go into json if we see we have only action that means this particular role only offers access to the infra component or to the resource but not to the data this is how uh, as a devops will be very clear to understand which particular role we should give to a user which we should not offer okay if we want to see a particular role which has the data action so if i close here and we can see the specific role that says storage blob data owner storage file data contributor will have storage file data contributor and same we have storage queue data reader queue data contributor let's see one of these let's see storage blob data contributor if we see here in the data action role here we see clearly that the permission a user will get is to write delete update and move the blob data in the json also it is clearly visible that not only we have uh, the user will have the action on the storage account container action but it will also have the data action along with it on the blob level this was only on the container level here we have inside the container the blob level okay so now you understand what is the difference between the action and data action what is not action and not data action let's suppose here in the action i have just given storage account slash star star means everything but something i don't want to give to the user because star gives everything so that particular something that i don't wish to give to that user that i'll be including in the not action same way it goes with the data action and not data action instead of having blob slash delete read write and move and all this what i can say blob slash star that means he can do everything related to that blob but if i want he should not delete it then i will add in non data action only that particular delete one that means he can do everything but he won't be able to delete a particular blob that's how the action not action data action and not data action works okay so i hope you understand now what is permission what are the uh, what is the format of a permission what are the different types of permission and how the permissions are categorized there are many many permissions if you go a particular resource will have multiple permissions as complex the resources will have as many permissions for that particular resource